Hey, what is up everyone? I'm Agonix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. So in today's Godot tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to add shaders into your game. So I'm going to be showing how to both add UI based shaders and also 3D shaders. So if you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And let's get right into it. So what I'm going to be doing, as I just said before, is I'm going to be showing you guys how to add shaders into your Godot game. So uh, what I've got here is in my browser, I've got godotshaders.com opened up because I don't know myself how to actually make shaders, but I do know how to add them in. And there's a good site here called Godot Shaders where you can find some free to use shaders here that you can use for your game. Um, if you're interested in the sort of licensing types, like, you know, uh, Creative Commons Zero, Public Domain, and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, you know, there's, so there's certain categories you can find for that. And, uh, yeah. So, as you can see here in my uh, browser tabs, I don't know if I'll have them shown here on my uh, screen, but um, I've got two other tabs here open, which have two uh, shaders from godotshaders.com here. So, we've got the VHS with Wiggle Shader. And this is something which I'm actually using for my new Mushi's Kitchen Reheated game. For those of you who don't know, um, I recently started uh, work on Mushi's Kitchen Reheated. Um, there's an old version of the game, but I've scrapped that now. I've started on a newer version, and uh, it's going to have more of like a retro look. And the VHS shader here, this VHS shader, is something which I'm using for that game. So yeah. And uh, this is a UI-based shader. And then for the 3D shader, we have this PS1 post-processing effect here, which is another thing which I'm actually using for my Mushi's Kitchen Reheated game. Because my Mushi's Kitchen Reheated game isn't supposed to be a PSX-style game, but I do like the sort of post-processing that this effect adds, so this is something that I've got going on in my game as well. And uh, by the way, I'm um, sorry if my voice sounds a bit weird, um, I've just been a bit sick the last few days, so if I do sound weird, that's why. I've just been sick, so yeah. So anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to get into adding these shaders. So first up, of course, make sure that you do have your uh, your scene, you know, just like a basic scene to test out the uh, shaders in. So what we're going to do first is we're going to try out the UI-based shader. So we're going to create a new scene, a user interface one. And uh, I'm just going to name this control to VHS shader. I'm just going to name it to that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a child node. And it will be a color rect. So just make sure that this thing fills out your screen like this. There we go. Alrighty. And then I'm just going to call this a uh, VHS. So, usually on GodotShaders.com, if you choose to get shaders uh, from this site, usually people will include instructions on how to add the shader into your game. So with this, it says to create a canvas layer node, add a color rect to the canvas layer node, then to click on the color rect, then go to the material, then add a new shader material, create a new shader, and then you paste in this code that they've got here. So this here is the shader code. And so, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is we are going to go to our color rect that we've added in. And where it says material, you want to click on this. Then go to where it says empty, and then new shader material. And then you want to click on the material here. And then where it says shader empty, you want to go here and then go new shader. And so with this shader, I'm just going to call it VHS. And I'm going to create a new folder. Um, I'm going to call this folder shaders. And I'm going to save it here. And I'm going to open it. Create. And boom. So now if we go to our shaders folder. As you can see when we click, when we double click on our uh, GD shader script. As you can see the actual script for the shader will show up. So what you want to do is you want to go here. You want to copy the code for the shader of whatever shader you want to use. It doesn't have to be this VHS shader, it can be any UI based shader that you want to use. And then uh, we just want to paste it like that and then boom! As you can see, we now have our VHS wiggle shader in. Now when you do add it in, uh, how you will know it will work is when the white color rect will just turn just invisible. 
So uh, now what we need to do is we can save our scene. We can go save it into the scenes folder, boom. And then we'll go to our normal level. We'll add in that VHS shader scene. And then when we test out our game, let's see what happens. And boom, so as you can see, now the VHS shader has actually been applied to my game. And now there is like an old VHS look on everything. You can see the sort of, uh, you know, effect going on here. And uh, yeah. Also, if you're a VHS shader as well, or whatever shader you're using, sometimes the creators of these shaders will actually include certain parameters that you can edit. Like, for example, with this VHS shader I'm using, there's a wiggle parameter, so I can make it wiggle more if I want to. I can change the wiggle speed. Um, I can make it smear more if I want to, or smear less. I can turn up the blurring if I want to, or blur it less. You know, there's all that sort of stuff you can edit too. Um, the VHS shader does work quite well, and I am glad with how it's turned out. And also, with UI-based shaders as well, like the VHS shader, they can actually affect elements of the UI. So if we add in, like, a texture rect, for example, we add in the icon, and then we add that in below the VHS. As you can see, now the icon is a bit more, uh, you know, it's all VHS-like, as you can see, and it's all wiggling around and stuff like that, as you can see. So, uh, yeah. So overall, um, UI-based shaders do affect the UI as well, so if you want to have like a, a VHS shader which, you know, affects your UI and stuff, well then this might be good for you. Also, you can see here when I turn up the wiggle amount, it really goes up, but yeah. I'm just going to do one more test um, in, the, uh, in the game, so let's do that. And here we are. So I don't know why the wiggling isn't happening when I actually uh, start the game. Oh wait, it is, but um, it's just not really with the UI. Oh wait, no it is. It's just, um, I could not really notice it at first. So if you can actually see now, um, I actually turned up the wiggling a bunch. And look at the scene here, it's wiggling a lot, but yeah. So basically I'm just trying to show how well this shader works, works pretty well. And uh, it's a shader which I'm currently using for my Mushi's Kitchen Reheated game. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, now let's move on to using a 3D shader. Alrighty, so now that I've shown you guys the UI-based VHS shader, I'm going to remove that from my scene. And this time we're going to be doing a 3D-based one. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be going into my browser. I'll close this tab since we don't need it anymore. And we'll be doing this shader now. So here, for the instructions, it says make a mesh instance, give it a quad mesh, make the size 2x2, two two, set the extra curl margin to the highest possible value, apply material with this shader to it. So let's get to it now. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our level scene here, and we're going to add a new mesh instance to it. So mesh instance 3D, and we're going to make it a quad mesh. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the quad mesh. And then with the size, you want to set it 2x2. Two two. And then one thing which you also want to do, I find, is you have to set flip faces. I don't think that's something which is actually explained in the instructions. But uh, I remember I was having a bit of trouble with this shader when I was trying to use it in my Mushi's Kitchen, Mushi's Kitchen Reheated game. But then when I enabled flip faces, that actually fixed it all up. So yeah. And now what you want to do is um, we want to go down to the, I think it's the geometry. Yeah, it's the geometry. And then with the extra cull margin, you want to turn this up to the highest possible value, which should be 16,384, depending on what version of Godot you're using, of course. But uh, yeah. So now once you have all that set, what you want to do is you just want to save, and then we're going to go add a new shader material. And then we're going to... Uh, add a new shader and then we're going to call this shader differing and I'm going to save this into my shaders folder. The reason as to why I'm calling it differing instead of PSX post processing is just because it's mainly a differing shader and um, that's mainly what I use it for in my game so yeah. Now we're going to go create 
and now we've got the shader applied. So now if we click onto the shader here, uh, now it is time for us to add our code. So let's go copy the code, and uh, now let's paste it. And boom, now it should all be goods. Except there is one thing which um, uh, apparently is a, an issue here. Def test disable, I think it needs to be def depth test disabled, I think. And then also, um, usually with shaders that aren't supported with Godot 4, there will be an extra variable which you need to add. So what we need to do here is we need to add uniform. Because this shader wasn't made for Godot 4, so there's a bit of, uh, you know, bugs here, but we're going to fix it. Uh, uniform sampler 2D, and then screen underscore texture. And then the hint underscore screen underscore texture. And then comma filter linear mip map and then I think that's it and then boom yep that is it so as you can see now we have our PSX post-processing uh, working and it is all good so with this PSX post-processing um, there is a bunch of stuff that we can edit with this in the shader parameters for example you can change the color depth so if you want to set it to a higher value you can uh, you can change the resolution scaling, so if you want to set that to a lower value so then your resolution is more high res, then you can do that as well. But if you want to maintain the differing, then you can do that. You can also disable the differing if you want to. But uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff you can do here. A um, bunch of edits you can make with this certain uh, shader. But uh, yeah. So you don't have to use these shaders, of course. I'm just using these as an example for uh, how to add in UI and 3D shaders into your scene. And now that we have this uh, PXX differing shader in our scene, how about now we actually uh, try it out? And here it is. So as you can see, we now have a PSX-like shader in our scene. So if you guys did enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more tutorials like this. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to see tutorials on in the future, and I might think about actually making a tutorial on it if I feel like it. But uh, yeah, overall, thank you all for watching once again, and I'll see you all soon in my next tutorial. Bye bye And yeah, I really do like this uh, shader here, it is a really nice shader. But uh, yeah, also be sure to go wishlist ULEM Shadow Memories on Steam, I forgot to say that as well.